Welcome to the Fundamentals of Secure Socket Layer, better known as SSL. SSL, TLS, Secure Socket Layer, and Transport Layer Security are both protocols used for the encryption of network data. You're welcome to take a look at all the RFCs that I've put there on the screen for you for all of the gory details. TLS is the most common version 1.2 that we use today in transporting our applications across the network. So I would encourage you to go look at RFC 5246 in your spare time to really gain a more understanding of how the protocol itself works. We're going to give you the basics here today. So SSL TLS rides on top of TCP and there is the SSL record layer which transports one of four message types. The first is the handshake, next change cipher spec, the alert, and then finally application data. And the application data typically that's transported is HTTP or web traffic, mail, SMTP, or SIP are the three most common session initiation protocol. This SSL information rides on top of TCP IP so we have a limitation there of maximum frame size of 1518 bytes. So if we start looking at segment sizes from TCP, you'll notice that the max segment size that we can transport is 1460 bytes of application data. If we add 1460, 20 bytes of TCP header to that, 1480 plus 20 bytes of IP header, 1500, we've met the maximum transmission unit hand that down to the data link later, layer or NIC driver, adds another 14 bytes of front end header and 4 bytes of CRC and we've built our 1518 byte frame. So that 1460 byte TCP segment can contain multiple SSL records which can be split over multiple TCP segments. One TCP segment can contain multiple SSL records or fragments. SSL provides for fragmentation and multiple SSL messages per SSL record are allowed. Here are the four different message types. We talked about the four SSL content types or message types. The handshake protocol which is responsible for the authentication and session key setup. Change cipher spec protocol which is the notification of starting the data encryption. Alert protocol, which reports warnings and any type of fatal errors that may be encountered. And uh, the application protocol, which is the actual encryption and transportation of that application data. Again, TLS is encryption for data in transit not data at rest, say, you know, encrypting data on your hard drive. It has nothing to do with TLS. TLS is used for encrypting data that we're going to transport across the network based on a TCP connection. So the host or recipient in that TLS connection must be able to decrypt the encrypted traffic sent to it in order to be processed and display the appropriate information in the web browser, mail application, or SIP message. So let's talk about the cryptography algorithms. There are really two types, symmetric algorithms and asymmetric algorithms. Symmetric algorithms like AES, triple DES, use a single key for encryption and decryption. That same key that encrypts data is used also to decrypt the data. With asymmetric algorithms like RSA, they use two different keys, two separate keys, one key for encryption and a different key for decryption. Symmetric ciphers are computationally much faster, don't require as much processing power and time, where asymmetric ciphers are more processor intensive. So symmetric ciphers are preferred, uh, but we'll find that typically we'll use a combination of both. So the different cryptography algorithms, the method most often used is a combination of both asymmetric and symmetric ciphers. Asymmetric ciphers are used to exchange 
or generate the key material from which the symmetric session keys will be derived. Symmetric keys are known as session keys because they are used for that single session. So we set up our TCP connection to 443, port 443 for instance. We create the keys and once we fin and tear down that session then those keys are discarded. New keys are built for the next session that gets created. They are shared secrets that are used from symmetric encryption decryption that are used for the bulk of the data encryption decryption. So session keys are computed on each side of the connection. The components used to generate the session keys are passed back and forth in one of two ways. And these two different ways are key exchange or key generation. The key exchange method uses an asymmetric encryption to send a pre-master secret securely to the server. The key generation method is used to exchange unencrypted components which both sides will use to derive their symmetric session keys. The RSA and DSA algorithms are commonly used with the key exchange method. The client generates a pre-master secret. Both sides generate the actual cryptographic keys used to encrypt decrypt the data transferred over the session. This pre-master secret must remain private to protect the confidentiality of the session. And then it is this seed from which the final keys will be derived. To protect the pre-master secret in transit, the client encrypts it with the server's public key. One of, the one of the keys in an asymmetric key pair and sends it to the server. The server uses the parameters exchanged during the handshake and the decrypted pre-master secret and applies an agreed upon pseudo-random function to produce the master secret. The session keys are then derived from the master secret. Here's what the TLS handshake would look like. The client would send a client hello, and I have a copy of the trace there which we will look at here in just a second. The server replies back with it, server hello, then supplies the certificate and server hello done message. Client then sends the key exchange, change cipher spec, and then finished, and at that point all data from the client will be encrypted. Server also sends change cipher spec and finished and from that point on all data will be encrypted from the server. We see in the Wireshark trace we see the client start the connection request, the three-way handshake, sync sync ACK. We see the max segment size that we discussed, 1460 bytes. Three-way handshake time, 87 milliseconds, so we have our network round trip time of 87 milliseconds. We can determine if that's good or bad. Then we see the client send the hello message. So we talked about the key exchange method and what has to happen after the three-way handshake. The client sends the hello, and in that hello we notice that it's offering 12 cipher suites to the server. It's saying, hey, I can support these different mechanisms to do encryption. It would like to use the first one that it offers. In this case TLS RSA with AES 128 bit SHA encryption. But it can support any of the other ones, triple DES, uh, etc. We see here that it's offering to the server. The server hello then tells the client which one it's going to use and it does agree to use the first one that the client offered, the TLS RSA with AES 128-bit encryption. Then we notice that the uh, server sends the key or the certificate and the client builds its key information from that. Does the client exchange cipher spec, change cipher spec and then the finished done and at this point from the client's perspective it will start encryption. Server then replies back with its change cipher spec and uh, encrypted handshake information and from that point everything is all set up both client side server side they've generated their keys for this one session and from this point on everything that is transported between the two is encrypted application data and we can see the application data that's being sent 
Uh, and we talked about you can have multiple SSL records and here's one of those where we see record layer uh, one and we have another record layer so there's multiple pieces being sent in one frame. Just earlier the RSA method for key exchange this is the key genera generation method which is used by Diffie-Hellman encryption. The client and server independently generate a master secret after the initial exchange of components that are required for the process, all of which can be public and therefore does not require encryption. Each side adds components that must remain private to protect the confidentiality of the process. These components are not transmitted across the network but remain private to each side. The important advantage of key generation, Diffie-Hellman over key exchange, RSA, is that if the traffic is intercepted by an attacker during the handshake, the attacker does not have enough information to compute the master secret and derive the keys. Even if the attacker were to be in possession of the server's private key, still can't do it. Using the key exchange method RSA, an attacker could independently derive the keys and decrypt the exchange data if they had access to the server's private key. That's a big differentiator. So you'll see here the difference. The client sends the hello, the server sends the hello, the server sends the certificate, very similar to the key exchange method, but now we see the server send the server key exchange, then the server hello done, client sends client key exchange, change cipher spec, then the finish, the server sends change cipher spec, and then the finish, and we will take a look at that here in the analyzer. We see the TCP three-way handshake, sync sync act takes 55 milliseconds to 995, port 995, we then see the client send the hello. As we saw previously, we see the client offers, in this case, 12 different ciphers that it can support. And again, the first one that it offers, the TLS RSA with 128-bit encryption. And it's up to the server to pick what it would like to do. We see then the server send back in the server hello, server hello. And we see it choose the Diffie-Hellman with 128-bit uh, encryption here. We then see the certificate from the server. We see the client exchange information. We see the change cipher spec, encrypted handshake. Uh, we then see the same from the server, change cipher spec, encrypted handshake, and at that point they have completed all of their key exchange information and can start sending data that is actually encrypted and, and we see that process happen there. So very similar to the RSA uh, again it sends out what it would like to do from the client's perspective it is up to the server to choose which mecha mechanism it wants to use for the encryption process and if any of that fails we would see an alert message but in this case everything works as it's supposed to um, and off we go we can then start sending application data